So the game I'm playing today is called Hocus. I made at least one mention of this game back when I played Puzzlement a couple of months ago. I mentioned that Hocus was another game that was created by the same person who made Puzzlement, and that I would probably not make a video of it because I just wanted to make note of the fact that the developer of Puzzlement had other projects underneath his belt. But because I have a tendency to change my mind every five minutes, I didn't explicitly state that I would not play Hocus. And thank God I didn't because... Well, that's what we're playing today. So Hocus is another puzzle game from the guy who created Puzzlement. I believe this is his first commercial project, if I'm not mistaken. Or at least this is the first game that he commercially released. Much like Puzzlement, Hocus also had a co-developer, but it wasn't the same person. I believe this game also came out for iOS before it was brought over to PC. And it kind of shows in the PC port because I feel like... Uh, the PC version hasn't really been optimized to run on PCs, and you'll see what I mean in just a moment. So, right here we're on the, uh, well this is not even the title screen actually. It says, Analog Stick is highly recommended except for Editor. I'll explain what this means in just a moment, the except Editor part. But this is the screen that it shows you before you actually get to the title screen, and you have a little, uh, you have a little gamepad that you can, uh, mess around with. You can left-click on it and drag. It is a physics-based object. It's connected to, uh, a wire right here. And you can just kind of swing it around. You can, uh, swing the wire around like it's a jump rope. Or you could just flail the damn thing around like a madman and it just kind of spazzes out. It's not really useful for anything, but, uh, yeah, you can just kind of see the wires freak out. Also, it causes your computer's GPU to freak out as well, so that's a thing. Doesn't really have a use other than that. It's just saying that it's, it's recommended that you use a controller to play this. Now, I have played this quite a bit off-screen. Yeah, so these are all of the levels that I've managed to beat so far. There's 100 in total, I've already beaten 40. Scrolling through this screen is an absolute nightmare, because what you have to do is that you have to use your cursor, you have to left-click and drag, but you have to drag it in the opposite direction. So, if you want to scroll downwards, you actually have to move your mouse upwards, and vice versa if you want to scroll upwards. But even doing that is an absolute challenge, because it just, it just seems like it does whatever it wants, and you can kind of tell just from the way that this menu is designed that it was meant to be played on a phone. So because I want to demonstrate the actual game here, I'm gonna go straight to level one. So, so yeah, see see this sentence right here? Just swipe. So you can tell that this is a, a, a port of a mobile game. It was not optimized for PC whatsoever. So you can swipe, but because I am playing this on PC, it would be a lot easier to just left click. So the way that this game works is that, uh, okay, well, I didn't even click on the red square, but it just decided to, uh, it just decided to tumble all the way to it regardless. So basically, the way that you control this cube here is that you just click on where you want it to go. So for instance, I wanted to roll all the way to this, uh, intersection right here. So, I just left-click on the intersection, it'll roll right to it. And then I want to make it roll the way to the left, so I just left-click on, on that part. It is a little bit harder for you guys to see, because I'm not recording my cursor, but I am clicking on the corners of the shape, so it'll roll all the way to the corners. Now, this black circle that you see on top, this will appear at the top of the level. Yeah, so this will show you the available direction, so that basically shows you which direction you can move your cube in. So I can only move it to the right at the moment, so all I can do is just move it right. And then when I get to this corner, there's two more directions that I can go down. I can go back to where I came from, or I could keep going down, and then I could just turn to the left, and then I can go forward. Now here's where things get a little interesting. Now up until this point, I didn't actually explain to you guys what this game revolves around. So the point of this puzzle game is that you're trying to get this cube to this red space over here, and you're trying to maneuver it around all of these impossible geometric shapes. Like over on the right here, you'll see the impossible triangle. So the levels are essentially based around the impossible geometric designs of MC Etcher. Very similar to that, you could also compare this to Monument in Valley, I guess, which was also a pretty popular iOS game, or a mobile game, I should say, and that was also another puzzle game that revolved around these kinds of impossible shapes. So your cube can attach itself to different surfaces, it can't actually roll over this intersection right here, it can attach itself to the side of it though, so you can now roll along the sides, and this is how we're supposed to get to uh, the red space on this level in particular, so all we have to do is just uh, click on the red so that it goes uh, to the left, or it rolls to the left, and that's it. You beat the level. So then we have the impossible triangle, as you can see we're starting on the side of it, so what we have to do is that we have to roll over here. So yeah, this is another one of these optical illusion style puzzle games where it really tries to mess with your perception, specifically your depth perception, because you'll notice that 
it, it clearly looks like we're sitting on the side of the impossible triangle, but then we roll downwards, all of a sudden, we're now resting on top of it, or at least that's what it looks like. So this is a puzzle game that will really attempt to mess with your mind. Really attempt to mess with your ignorant little brain. That's pretty much it for that level, so then we go to number 5. So as you can see, the red space is on the side of the object, so we have to try and make our way there, which is pretty simple. We actually just, uh, yeah, we, j we just roll along the sides. And all of a sudden, we've somehow managed to escape the object altogether. Now we can just roll into the little red square. Just position ourselves inside of it. But this shape is a little bit more interesting, because it almost kind of looks like a hexagon. But you have this little section that's kind of crossing through the middle of it. So it's like separating the hexagon into two different sides. We need to try getting over to the left side. And, uh, yeah, it's... <laughs> As with a lot of these puzzle games, the first few levels are going to be really simple, but it gets it gets a lot more complicated later on. But like I said, this is another one of these puzzle games where it, it really doesn't feel like there's a very smooth difficulty curve. It really does feel like it fluctuates wildly. Like, I've especially noticed this with levels 20 to 40, because it seems like there are, there are some levels within that range that are incredibly complicated, but you also have a handful of levels that are just laughably easy as well. So the difficulty, in my opinion, doesn't appear to increase that steadily. It, it does appear like it like it's very chaotic. It's more like a roller coaster than a gradual rise. Like sometimes it'll rise, but then suddenly it'll dip and then rise again. I don't know. It just it just feels like it's it's really all over the place. But that last level was uh, pretty simple. Just had a triangle with a bunch of intersections, most of which you didn't even have to take. But then we have another like impossible triangle section right here. So now we're uh, wait where where exactly are we here? Okay, yeah. So we're. Uh, we're upside down now. Yep, yeah, just rolling upside down along the impossible geometry. I'm actually trying to remember how exactly I solved this here. Did I have to move back to the left? Okay, yeah, I did have to move back to the left because now I'm on the outside all of a sudden. So yeah, this really does this really does mess with your brain. Really makes you question what's real and what's not. But then we also have this cross section right here. So once again, we're going to be uh, rotating on the side. Now there are some directions that you're clearly not supposed to travel in. For instance, it's pretty obvious that we're not supposed to roll upwards if we're at this point in the level because that won't lead to anywhere. But the only way we can switch between surfaces is if we collide with the side of an object, or the object, I should say, because most of these levels only have you rolling across one object in particular. And yeah, there we go. So now we're on the outside, and then we just roll down there. Then you have this object, which looks like a reverse dollar cyan. See, so this geometry looks pretty simple, so you just roll down, and all of a sudden you're on one of the flatter planes. Well, I mean, all of the planes are flat here, but you're, you're on the horizontal plane. So then what I think you gotta do is that you gotta roll up here, yeah, so as you can see, it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the, the cube sticks to different surfaces, which is how it can actually, like, roll up the sides of walls right here, and then roll upside down like this. This cube doesn't give a damn about gravity. Now, how exactly did I want to go about this again? Did I want to, did I want to roll down the, uh, the leftmost tube right here, the leftmost pillar? I believe that's what I want to do. Then do I want to roll up the side of this wall? Okay, yes, I definitely do because then I can attach myself to the bottom rightmost pillar, or the bottom part of the rightmost pillar, and then I can just roll all the way down to the red space, insert myself into it, and that, that's it. We just move on. Oh, okay, I guess when you look at this from a certain perspective, it actually looks more like a cube. I don't know, I saw a hexagon. I guess because I was staring directly at the center, then you notice that the, the sides kind of disappear, and it, it resembles a bit more of a hexagon, because all you see are the sides. You don't actually see what's what's in between, if, if that makes any sense. Also, where where exactly is the cube? Yeah, whenever whenever the cube goes completely behind the geometry, I, I always forget where exactly it is. Also, I really don't understand the point of the black circle up here telling you which directions you can move in. I mean, I guess it would be useful in the first few levels, just to give you an indication as to how exactly you're supposed to play the game, but it remains there for all of the levels, and I understand that it's just trying to guide you, like it's telling you where exactly you can go, like, what moves you can make, given your current position within the level. But I do feel like it can make the levels a bit too easy at times. I mean, this is- this is not a very complicated puzzle game. Even though it deals with impossible geometry, it's- it's very easy to figure out how exactly it works. Look, you get to this intersection right here, you can keep on rolling on the horizontal plane, or you can attach yourself to the side of this pillar right here and roll along that instead. So if you're standing on one surface, but there's another surface adjacent to you, well, 
just roll along the adjacent surface, or usually you can, but I think you can tell very easily which directions you can move. For instance, I'm at the very top right here, I can only move either down or to the right, which is exactly what it's telling me, but I didn't need the black circle to tell me that, because I can tell just from my current position in the level, I can easily deduce which directions I can travel in, and which directions I can't. Like, for instance, I can't move to the left, because there's no surface for me to attach myself to. I also can't roll upward, so I don't really see the point of it in the later levels. Besides, I don't really need it anyway. I don't- I don't need a guide. I- I can do this on my own. I know exactly what I'm doing here. I ain't- I ain't no- no dumb child. I don't need any supervision. I'm an adult. I know my cardinal directions. You don't need to remind me of them. Anyway, what we have to do is that, uh, we have to roll outside here, or is that what we're supposed to do? Yeah, I- th I, th I think we're supposed to, because then we can attach ourselves to this surface, and we can roll down, but we have to be on the exact same plane as the square in order to, uh, in order to insert ourselves into it, and actually we are on the same plane, so all we have to do, just roll around these corners, and insert ourselves right into it. And then we move on. So one thing that is very interesting, and definitely makes this game a lot different from some other puzzle games that I have played before, is that this puzzle game does have a level editor. You can actually create your own levels, and... I'm not sure how large this game's community is, and I actually haven't tried searching for any custom-made levels off-screen. I might go and do that very quickly once I decide that I'm, uh, that I'm done showing you guys, uh, the main levels here. Because the level editor is something that I would like to show off very quickly, because it's pretty easy to use. It's a, a very simple level editor, but then again, this is a very simple puzzle game, so I don't expect it to be overly complicated. So I would like to show you guys how the level editor works, and I would also like to show you some of the very interesting mechanics that this game uses in order to load custom levels, even though I find that they're completely unnecessary. But I'll get to that in just a moment. I'll try and uh, complete a few more levels here. Oh god, what exactly am I doing? Do I have to, to roll to the outside? Do I gotta roll onto the outside? Okay, yes, I do have to roll. Wait, hang on a second. When I go underneath that little section right there... Okay, no, I am still rolling along the exact same plane, but it doesn't look like it, though. Cause it looks like, oh god, this is this is messing with my head. This is this is playing tricks on my eyes here. But see, this is one of the things that I always liked about Optical Illusions: the fact that it that it messes with your eyes so much. It looks like it shouldn't work, but it somehow does, and it and it just it makes you question reality. Especially this level right here, because it looks like everything is on the exact same plane. What we have to do is that we have to actually roll downwards. So we have to go onto the side of the object right here. This one is a little bit trickier, I will admit. Uh, wait, I think we need to... Yeah, we need to we need to roll upside down here. Yeah, this is, this is one of the, one of the trickier levels. So, gotta hit this side of the object right here. Now we're on the flat plane again, and then we can just roll all the way to the red space. I do also like how the the cube at least have has a shadow. So at least you got a you got a little bit of realism here. You got some realistic looking shadows. And not only that, but all of the all of the surfaces that are facing away from each other or like facing towards the screen, they're all shaded gray, I guess to signify that those surfaces are receiving the least amount of light. Then we have this level that is basically two triangles overlapping each other. What we got to do here is that we just kind of roll around at the speed of sound, well, we kind of roll around at the speed of molasses in this game. Yeah, and this gigantic intersection all the way over here, we don't even need to go to it. Yeah, sometimes I don't really understand some of these level designs, because you have, like, entire sections that you don't even need to go to. I mean, right there, it was pretty obvious that I could just roll to the red space immediately. I didn't have to take the long path around it. I could have if I wanted to, just in case I was curious as to where it leads to, but it doesn't lead to anywhere as far as I'm concerned. So here, I believe, we want to keep on rolling upside down or is that what we want to do yeah i think we want to i think we want to just just keep on going for the time being or, or do we well we're we're attached to the giant pillar now i i do believe this is this is what we what we're supposed to be doing or is it did i did i just go around i think i just looped back around actually hang on a second i'm getting confused now i'm getting confuzzled no i think i need to do i need to go on this surface yeah i have to use this impossible triangle okay yeah that's all I had to do in the in the first place. I just had to keep moving to the left. See what I meant? That was like what what I did before was completely unnecessary. Over here is just another triangle with with more pillars and intersections. It's all sorts of of random structures. But I believe what we want to do go around this impossible triangle. Except we're gonna be upside down now. So I well I hang on a second. 
No, 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 this is exactly what we what we want to do. Because then we can attach ourselves to this wall. There we go. We're on the exact same plane as the square. So, we just roll all the way to it. I do kind of wish you could just use either WASD or the arrow keys. Because those controls don't function at all in this game. Like, I, I'm, tr I'm spamming the WASD keys right now. And then the arrow keys. But it's doing absolutely nothing. So, you have to click on where you want to go, which I guess is a lot more convenient than using WASD or the arrow keys, but still, I would kind of appreciate it if I could just maybe use the A key to, to travel to the left, and once I made it to a junction, then the cube would just stop automatically, which it already does. I don't know, I just kind of wish the controls weren't as simple as just left-clicking everywhere, but then again, I don't expect very complex controls from games like this. Okay, where's my where's my cube? Why do I keep referring to, to cubes as squares? My god, I, I don't know my 3D objects. I especially didn't know my geometric shapes when I played Octahedron, yeah. I, I, I refer- the game's called Octahedron. There's an Octahedron that takes control control of, of my main character's brain, attaches itself firmly to his cranium, and, and I refer to it as a tetrahedron. Despite the fact that the, the name octahedron is directly within the game's title, and it clearly looks like an octahedron. Actually, you want an even better example of my stupidity? I refer to beakers as potions in the Hue video that I uploaded last week. See, that's the problem, is because usually when I do make mistakes like that, I tend to do it unconsciously, because I don't even realize I'm doing it. I only realize after I finish recording the video, and then I open up Vegas to edit the footage, only then do I realize all of the uh, grammar mistakes that I made throughout the video. So if there is one thing that I do need to get better at, it's uh, trying to detect these mistakes consciously so that I can correct myself as soon as I make them. Also, where the hell am I even going? I'm not e I'm not even sure where where I am right now. Okay, I think we need to we need to get to this to this bottom section right here. See, but this is what I mean. This is this is what what makes it really weird because when I attach myself to this wall, I roll down it, so I'm clearly going to a, a bottom part, right? I'm going to a lower part of the structure. But no, I'm I'm on the exact same plane as it. Okay, but I think what I actually want to do... Hang on a second, this is exactly where I was already. Yeah, because I, I tried rolling down here before, didn't I? I don't think this is what I want to do, though. Or is this what I want to do? I think this might be the only thing I can do. Oh, wait, no. I think I have to keep on going through here. Okay, yes. So just navigate around, around this square section. And then I believe what I can do... Okay, yes. Stop this intersection. Roll down. Roll to the right. Attach myself to the side of this wall right here and then roll down right into the red space. All right, level 20, level 20. Okay, it's a trapezoid intersecting a triangle. So what we have to do, if I can even remember what we're supposed to do, because I have terrible short-term memory as I've, as I've stated in previous videos, I do think we want to attach ourselves to the triangle. Actually, no, I do not believe that's what we want to do. I think we want to we wanna actually rotate around the trapezoid here. Yeah, so we can end up within the inside, the interior. Roll around one of the corners of the triangle so we land on it. Yeah, we're, we're on the top of the triangle now, because we want to get ourselves latched onto the side of it, so we can go inside the red square. The thing we want to do is we want to go to the right over here. Yes, I, I do think this is correct, because I believe if I do this, it'll lead to absolutely nowhere. Okay, good to know. But if I keep moving to the right, that also leads to nowhere. So did I did I did I screw this up? Did I did I accidentally bone myself without realizing it? Do I want to go around the side here instead? Is is this what I already tried doing? I don't believe so. No, it's definitely something that I hadn't tried doing, but this is going to lead to absolutely nowhere either. Okay, I'm kind of starting to remember this level actually because I had a I had a fair bit of trouble trying to figure this one out. Or do I want to go upside down? Oh yes, I do want to go upside down because now I'm on the side. There we go. There we go. I figured it out. I don't even know what the hell this shape is right here. Yeah, you got all these abstract shapes just kind of intersecting one another. The, the bottom part kind of resembles like an LCD number 8. I think what I'll do is that I'll just play up to level 25, and I'll try to complete it. There are achievements you can unlock in this game for uh, getting to a certain point. There's achievements you can unlock for beating levels 25, 50, 75, and 99. I'll try playing up until the point where I get the level 25 achievement, even though I've already snatched it off screen. I'll just play it up until that point, then I'll show off the level editor. So yeah, not really anything else I have to say about Hocus other than that, guys. It's just a really simple little puzzle game here. But it does revolve around geometric shapes, or, or impossible geometry, I should say. And you guys know me, I am definitely a, a sucker for anything involving optical illusions. Okay, I think I am getting closer to the red space, but yeah, okay. 
and, and something else that I should also mention is that there are some parts of the structure that are clearly within the foreground and the background. The structure that the red space is occupying, this is clearly in the foreground right here. So it's clearly in front of the surface that I'm currently resting on. So then all I can do is roll up the side right here, but I can't actually insert myself into the red space. So that's, that's another thing you need to keep in mind. There are some objects that are clearly in the foreground and the background, and there are some that are, that are intersecting each other. Like, actually intersecting. They're crossing straight through. But in most levels, they aren't. They're either moving in front of each other or moving behind each other. That's what can get a little confusing at times, but I still managed to figure it out anyway. So there you go. Level 22. Oh god, okay, this one is really playing tricks with my eyes. Well, don't go down in. Don't go down, because that, that's a stupid decision. That leads to absolutely nowhere. What we want to do instead is move over this way. Move over yonder. And, okay, well, there's two different ways I could go. I'm gonna try this way first. That's, okay, if I go up top, that's gonna lead to absolutely nowhere, so not even gonna bother with that. There are very clear paths that will go absolutely nowhere, but that didn't look especially clear to me, apparently, because that led to absolutely nowhere. I still decided to go down there anyway, so we have to go all the way down to the bottom. Roll all the way down to the bottom right here. I think we have to use... No, we're, we're not we're not supposed to use the impossible triangle in order to reorient ourselves. No, 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 that's not gonna work. That ain't gonna work, son. What we're gonna do instead... Yes, okay, we are actually on the side right here, which is which is where we want to be. Okay, but this this part right here is in front, so we can't we can't just jump straight to it. So what we're gonna have to do is once again reorient ourselves here. We gotta take the long way around, and I... Th Oh god, where the hell am I going right now? I'm not even sure at this point. Oh god, what am what am I even doing? I'm I'm not sure anymore. How did I make it all the way to level 40? This is the most confusing pile of garbage I've ever played. Well, it's not garbage, because it makes it sound like the game is horrible. It's not, but it's not something you'll be playing for, like, hours on end, I can tell you that. This is- this is a casual experience. It's- it's for- this is for the filthy casuals out there. Don't be offended by that, because that- that's a term I commonly use to describe myself, because, frankly, I'm- I'm not a hardcore gamer. I never was. Doesn't mean I don't enjoy playing hardcore games, but, oh my god, I'm just looping back around. What am I doing? I'm gonna need a lifeline for this, because I don't even remember- Oh wait, no, 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 I don't need a lifeline. No, screw the lifeline. I don't need to call anyone. It's not who wants to be a millionaire. Okay, level 23 is pretty easy. This is like a- like some sort of rectangle. I'm pretty sure there's a name for this particular object, but I just don't remember what it was. We gotta roll down all the way to the bottom, and then I think we need to roll all the way back on top. Yeah, there we go. We just gotta defy gravity. We just gotta- Gotta go along- go along the different surfaces here. Crawling along them like we're Spider-Man. I mean, who knows? This could even be, like, some sort of minimalist interpretation of Spider-Man. He's just a giant red cube that can roll along surfaces, even roll up, like, steep 90-degree inclines. As long as there's a smooth transition to the surface. Okay, yeah, we're- wait, no, I- I looped back around again. Are you freaking kidding me right now? Yeah, so that's basically how you transition between surfaces. There has to be a smooth transition to the surface that you're trying to get to. So, right here, there's a smooth transition. Just a flat plane that leads into a 90 degree vertical incline. Yeah, you can totally roll up that. But I can't roll along to the other side of this pillar over here because they are clearly separated. Okay, do I want to keep on rolling down over here? Because I am on the bottom surface now. Okay, no, if I'm gonna- if I do that, I'm just gonna keep looping around. So there's gotta be some other way I have to do this. Roll around this way. Yes, there we go. Rolling around the bottom parameter. Okay, cool. Now we're on the exact same surface. Go in there and stay in there. Okay, never mind. Maybe maybe the difficulty doesn't fluctuate wildly in these in these levels. Maybe I'm just stupid. Maybe maybe that's the explanation. Okay, yeah, there is a very specific way I gotta do this. I gotta get to the top. Okay, so we wanna we wanna roll around the, the bottom part. Very good. And now we're on the top. Or at least it appears as though we're on the top, even though apparently everything's actually on the on the same plane. I, I don't get it. I, I honestly don't. MC Etcher is a genius, even though these particular designs weren't even made by him. I mean, as far as I'm aware, he, ha he had no involvement in the development of this game. I mean, his work definitely inspired it. There's no doubt about that. Not only that, but I'm pretty sure he's he's not even alive anymore, is he? Pretty sure he's deceased by now, but whatever. This is, this is the final level I'm going to attempt to uh, complete here. Oh boy, where where do I want to go? Where exactly do I want to go? I don't want to go to the outside. That that's going to that's going to lead to absolutely nothing. Do I want to roll along the side right here? I I th I I think that's what I would like to do. But I just have no clue where I'm going. Hey, wait. I I may have an idea now. I may have an idea. Hang on a second, boys and girls. Okay, scratch that. I may not have an idea because I think I'm just going back around again. 
Yes, I'm, I'm at the Syed. Oh wait, no, I think this is what I have to do. Gotta roll down here. There, now I'm on the exact same plane. So just get in. My god. And this, this shape right here kind of looks like a window, but I'm not gonna bother completing it. Because I have no interest, so s screw that nonsense. We're, we're done for now. So in the level editor, you have this hexagonal grid that you can place blocks on. Now there's only two different kinds of blocks. There's just a very tiny block, and then there's also the very elongated one. And of course, you can attach objects to it. I'm just gonna create a very simple level right here. I'm not going to, uh do anything too crazy. But yeah, you can attach it to different level objects, you can place them in six different directions, so you have only about six degrees of movement in this game. That's pretty much all you do here in the level editor, it's an extremely simple one. Yeah, so you can also do crazy stuff like this right here, where you can create, like, intersections, like little junctions. So as you can see, it splits into two separate paths, although this is kind of poorly designed because I, I created this, like, little pillar thing that's protruding out of it. Not even sure where the hell that's going. So if you do have a cross-section like this, you can also change which part will be in the background or the foreground. So you can just have a regular cross-section like this, or you could place one beam on top of the other, or you could place it on the bottom. So it is possible to layer them. Dear God, what the hell did I even create here? After you've created the actual layout of the level, this is just for demonstration purposes, by the way. So then you can place a start point. Uh, sure, I'll just place it right here. Then we have to place a destination point, so I can just place this absolutely anywhere I want. For the purpose of demonstrating the level editor, though, I think I will just place it on... Yeah, just place it on that corner over there. Yeah, and then we have personal info. I'm just going to put my username in. I'm not gonna add my actual name. So then we have to play and test the level. This is gonna be pretty easy because all we have to do is just uh, roll all the way to that one corner. Actually, could I do something crazy right here? Well, yeah, I was kind of thinking that this would just lead me to, to the outside area. Oh, wait. Okay, well, I, I, guess, I guess that's kind of smart because there is there is like a second way I can do this. I can just rotate around the outside and then go down this one pillar right here, and that still takes me to the destination. I guess there's actually two ways you could beat my incredibly shitty level. So this is what's interesting. After you finish playtesting your level, you will receive a coed. So if you own Hocus on Steam, you can copy this level coed into the level editor, and it should load the level. But alternatively, there's this card that you can download. This will save your level as an image file, and somehow it stores the level data within the image file. I'm not entirely sure how it works, but I'm gonna try and download it here just to demonstrate this. So you can't see this right now, but I am saving the image file for my level onto my hard drive. And because it does save it as an image file, I guess I'll show it on screen here just so you guys can see what the image looks like. So that's my level right there. That's the card that it created. And then what I can do is that I can exit the level editor. I can go to play with card. I'm not gonna try the code because I just don't care, honestly. The, the card mechanic is a lot more interesting to me. Then we're gonna go and up Upload the card. Gonna choose test.jpg. Yeah, see, by Robotnik35. And then it should... Yeah, it loads the level. So that picture I showed you just a moment ago had all of the level data stored on it. I have no clue how that works. I mean, that's... Like, like I said, it is kind of unnecessary, because I feel like the developer would have benefited a lot more from just implementing Steam Workshop support so people can more easily share their levels. But it's still an interesting mechanic, like the fact that you can save an entire level's data on a picture? Like an image of a little card? How, how exactly does that work? I'm, I'm actually kind of fascinated by that. But see, that that's what I find unnecessary, because then you would have to upload the card somewhere so that people could download it and play it themselves, and there was also the code, but... Like I said, I just don't understand the necessity of this. Wouldn't it have been easier for the developers to simply add Steam Workshop support? It would eliminate most of the work required to actually share a level. It would just make it a lot easier for your players. Why do I have to share some code or create a card? Like I said, this game was not optimized to run on PC. I'm kind of thinking that maybe it shouldn't have even been ported to PC, at least not in the state that it's in. That's Hocus. I don't really have anything more to say about it. Just a cool little puzzle game based around the impossible geometric designs of MC Etcher. If that's your kind of thing, then I guess go and pick it up. It's only one dollar, so even if you don't like it, I mean you're not taking that much of a risk. You can definitely tell that this game was designed to be played on a phone, because it really does feel like this PC port has been hastily prepared. I mean, even the levels themselves don't occupy the entire screen, because you'll notice that when I go into a level, 
look, look at what happens to the screen. Like, like, look at, look at the actual part of the screen that the level occupies here. Look at how tiny it is. This is basically the width of the iPhone screen when you're holding it vertically. So all in all, it's still a pretty cool little mobile puzzle game, but there was a clear lack of effort put into porting this game to PC. There was almost no effort, in my opinion. Also, the whole card and code thing in order to share custom levels, like, what, what is even the point of that? Just add Steam Workshop support, or implement some sort of online database that users can easily upload their custom levels to so that other players can download and play them themselves. I mean, the card-creating technology in particular is pretty cool, but at the end of the day, it's not necessary. And for the record, this game came out in 2015, so it's not old. This kind of stuff has become synonymous with PC gaming, and I understand that Hocus was not originally a PC game, but it was ported to PC, and it's available on Steam, so... I, I expected more from this, honestly. If you're not even gonna bother making an attempt to create a good PC port of your mobile game, then just don't bother porting it at all. I almost feel like this game doesn't even have a reason to be on Steam, given the state that it's in. But maybe you guys have a different opinion, so just go purchase it, play it for yourselves, it's only one dollar. And let me know what you guys think. The link is in the description, and there's also uh, links to the mobile versions of the game as well in the description, if you wanna get it on either iOS or Android, which, honestly, I think you're better off just getting it on those platforms instead, because the PC version is pretty lackluster in my opinion. Also, if you guys are getting sick and tired of seeing me review all of these weird, obscure puzzle games on my channel, Fear not, because this is the last one I plan on reviewing for quite some time. Of course, this won't be the very last puzzle game that I ever cover on my channel, but I'm gonna take a break from this particular genre for a little while, because honestly, I feel like I've been playing way too many of these recently, and y you guys deserve a break from it. I'll try covering some other genres in the meantime. Anyway, thank you guys for watching as always. I'll see you in the next video I make. Later!